Okay. So I need to create a new package overall. So how to create a new package? Right click on SRC, new class. Even class creation time also, you can create the package. You can give the package name here, control structure programs. So and class name, we are working with the conditional statement. So I'll write the methods here also. Here also I'll write the methods because every scenario will write a methods. So what type of methods you want me to write? Non-static methods. Non-static methods? So what is a non-static method syntax? Access modifier. Access modified. Hmm. The return type if we are okay. Wide. Yeah, I'm, I'm taking wide only as a return method. type. Okay. Method name. Method name parenthesis. Parameter. So basically, I'm doing here parameterized method. So, so data type P1. So data type P2. Basically, basically what we are doing here is uh. So these two parameters I'm going to consume inside this method body to do a calculations, to do comparisons or whatever you want, if conditions, if you want to write, you need this. So let's go and write private wide if demo. So in TA comma, into B. So, just write a simple programs. So first I will compare A and B. If A greater than B, I'll simply say that. Into value of A. So inside A greater than B. If. Say A is big. If you want to write one more condition again, you have to write one more if condition. A is then B. Then so A double equal to B. So you have to write so many conditions, right? Every condition you have to write one if you block. For example, if you want to just, you want to write, you know, direct, uh, expression, so Boolean value you want to pass, just write directly Boolean value. Negation, false. Okay, so that's it, simple. Um, how can you execute this non-static method? Using object, creating, creating object. object. 
create object for the class for the class so what is our if, class name if demo conditional, no, statement. conditional statement demo why, why if demo madam it's a method right yes sir so this class is a class keyword after class name will be there that's very simple yes sir. should not forget that sorry sir that's uh, that mistake you should not get uh, after reaching the half of the part so this time you the still not recognizing the class means that's a shame see that here even you will get here the class name yes, your sir. file name is the class name okay okay so new Here. class name reference of object equal to new class, class name just follow the so object reference csobj equal to new class name that's it so now you call that method obj dot So you give all the values, okay? So I think I haven't explained how the memory will be stored. I'll explain this memory part also. First, let's execute this, okay? Run as. What happened only which block executed? Yeah, less than. Then uh, all are skipped, this block and this block is exported. That's it, right? So here are, sorry, that's why we are getting uh, in the red color. This is I have used here. So by this take it okay, but fine. Anything is fine, right? Okay, now, That that's how do you know which which block is executing? How can you step by step you can execute? So what do you call that? That is called debug mode. You need to run. Now you are running the normal mode, Java mode. How can you run in debug mode? How to run in debug mode? To run in debug mode, so you have to. First, first step is you want to run from particular step. Okay, so first step is you have to put the toggle breakpoint from which line onwards you want to run. So which line onwards you want to run? So that you put in the, so what's toggle breakpoint? You have to add a toggle breakpoint here. Mm -hmm. I want to run from this, this is called toggle breakpoint. That means you are expecting to run from this line onwards, line by line code. If you want to run line by line code, so you need to, First, place the toggle breakpoint. Then, so top right side, can you see here two icons are there? One is Java perspective, one is a bug icon, debug icon. So click on debug icon. Okay. Then right click, debug as Java application. So debug as Java application. So then the cursor will come and stop in this ninth line. Ninth line, you're running in the debug mode. Previously, you ran in the Java mode. mode. Now you are running in the debug mode. Debug mode means to execute the line by line code so that you can understand where the cursor is going. Now, sir, it stopped here. See, it is running mode. How can you say it is running mode? This red color. Can you see here? Yeah. Yes. Still in running mode, it stopped here. Wherever you place the toggle breakpoint, it stopped there. Now your intervention is important here. 
now you press either you click on this toggle this uh, arrow icons right step mm -hmm. over or f6 mm -hmm. you click on f6 or click on this uh, toolbar icon so then cursor will move to next line so now a greater than b true or false see here right side a value 25 wow. b value 30. so your parameter wow. values will be shown under variable section on the right hand side so now this is a true or false 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 means will it go to 10th and 11th lines no 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 hmm? no so it won't go then what will happen? It will jump to next block. 14th. Next block, which is 14th 14. line, it will jump. See, from 9th to it will jump to 14th 14. line. Why it is jumping? Why not this code is not executing? That condition, that condition is false. false. So this is false. So now execute this. See, it jump. Now, if this is a true or false? It is true. True, true right? So yeah. true means what? Now it, the, that will execute, right? Again, that yeah. code will execute. So that code executes means, so you have to print. So one by one statement will execute. Let's see in one by one statement is executing or not. See that? Click on this arrow icon. See, it came inside the 15th line. Why it is coming inside? It is true. It's true. The, condition, the condition is true. condition is true or false? True, sir. 19th line is false. 19th line is false, sir. 14th false line. again, right? It will jump to where? 23 line. 23. So it is directly it went here because it's a true. Next. So this is the how to run line by line code, 30th line and 42 line, because the main method ends in the 42 line. That's why it stops now. See so one more. So click you how to do, then it will stop. So why it will stop? There is no other code to execute. That's why it will stop. So that's it. See, there are no red color. It's completed. Execution is completed. So this is the how to run in debug mode. So what is the first step? First place the toggle breakpoint in the method inside any line, which line onwards you want to execute a step by step. Second step, move into debug mode. Debug. Third step, right click, right. Debug, debug as Java application. So can someone repeat the steps? First, keep the toggle point where you want to start the execution. Hmm. After that, uh, go to right side top top debug. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. After debug that, mode. Select the debug mode. Okay. Uh, select the debug mode. After that, right click debug gas. Hmm. Java, Java application. application. Okay. So. That's the how to run in debug. How can you come back? So debug mode to normal mode. Click on Java mode. So normal mode, you will get it. Any questions? So that's the if else, uh, if conditions only. Now, if else, so we need to write if else. So in the if else, what, what statements are there? You see that. Just go back our control structures. This if and if else, do we have any? Okay, so let me write this. So next, uh, next one is, so access modifier. Why? Void method name. So parenthesis curly bracket. No, so I'll write protected. So void if else 
them. So then, so I'm going to declare a few variables, okay? So let's declare. So hold on, I want to check one by one person. So the testing time for the people. I want to choose the persons. Nikita, what is the local variable syntax? Hmm? Data type, data type variable name equal to value, sir. Okay, good. So data type? Variable, variable name equal to, equal to value. Value. Good, very good. So I'm going to declare three variables. So all three variables in a single line you can declare. So int a equal to 10 or 40. Whatever it is, um, 40, B equal to 30, C equal to 100. Okay, so the three variables I declare. Now I'm going to write here logical operators I'm going to use here. First, let's use logical R operator. So I'm going to use logical R operator. Okay, so this is the R. So I hope you all know this logical R operator. How to write? If so, A greater than 10, R. So B less than 25. I'm saying. So I'll, I'll just write a comment. Now this condition is true or false? True, sir. Hmm? True, sir. B is B less. Yeah, this is true. So then you print some value. So I'm just printing some value. Okay, so then let B. Same way now I'm going to use so logical and operator. So what is logical and operator symbol? Two and present. Two and symbol. And present. Okay, so and percent twice you write it. Everything code is same. I'm just going to use the and operator here. Now, where it will go the cursor? This this condition is false. So here it will execute false condition. Okay. So here instead of R, let's use the and. That's it. So just call this method.
See, first a block code executed and then else block code executed. Any questions? No. So that's the else block. Now, next difference. So next to so method is uh, we have to write nest difference. So I'll take a you no know, lot of programs are here, but I'll take one of them. Okay. So we don't need all of them, but at least one program I'll write. So I'll write uh, this BMI one. Okay. This BMI one. Okay. Let me write BMI one. Or you want me to take a different one? So just to follow, uh, okay, so this, uh, either this one or this roller coaster flow diagram also, you can try it out. So if you just open this and you know how to follow the diagram. So diagram based on the diagram also, you can write the code. So if you write based on the diagram, that's so easy for you also, okay? So for example, this one roller coaster, if you see that basically, the based on the height, the person can ride or not, you have to tell, right? If height is greater than 120 centimeters, then you can, uh, it can ride, ride it. You can ride, else you cannot ride. Right. So this is the top if else. So this is the if else. So if condition is true and you, the if condition again, so you have to can write, you have to say, and then one more condition is coming. So again, if A is, is less than 12 or so greater than, so less than 12 and under A is, is greater than 18, okay, <laughs> over. So between 12 and 18 means uh, the, the price is different. This is can write, but so this, this is the price. So you have to know price is this one. If less than 12, this is the price. If uh, between 12 to 18, this is the price. If A is 18 above, so the if else is coming here also. If else is coming, nested if else is coming. First if, first if after, if else conditions is coming here. So I'll take this one, okay? I'll take this one. So let's go and write this. So this you take up other uh, scenarios and uh, do that. So this roller coaster program based on this, how to design the program. So let's see that. So 12 to 18 means uh, $7. Uh, above 18 means uh, $12. So again, so if, okay, so any of this, again, after this, so you want to take a photos. So yes means again, plus $3 will add for the so this price, so this cost, the, okay. Uh, so how many people total that you have to take it up. And uh, otherwise, so no photos and uh, total bill is, you're going to add X. So that's a total bill you have to so print it. That's the total program here. So can we do this or so any other thing you want? Or you can do this. Any other program you want to take? We do this. And this is another one also there. Small pizza, medium pizza, large pizza. And uh, so this based on that price also there. So you have to ask like this. So welcome to Python. So this is a Python program, but I, we can convert into Java also. Yeah. That, that's another one. Uh, another instruction is there. Uh, and BMI also is there. BMI is a very easy one. You can try the BMI and also leap year. Leap year also, if you follow this, it's very easy. If you follow this diagram, it's so easy. If you are not following the diagrams, that's a difficult. So see if you follow the diagram, 
you will get very nicely. So if you are not following only, it, it will be a bit difficult. So first this one, if so this condition, and your year is the input. So you are, you are going to give year as the input for the method. And that year is divisible by four. So then you can say it's a leap year, but again, you're going again one more if condition. So this if condition inside one more if condition. So this else you are saying not a leap year. And this if first if inside another if. If this one is, hey, this one is, For example, year is you know, divisible by 100. Again, you are getting if divisible by 100 means one more if condition inside that. So if that is also divisible by 400, and you can say leap year. So if it is not divisible by 100, and you can say it is a leap year. So like this, you just frame the you know, if inside one more if, that inside another if. Then you wherever no is there, else condition will else spot else spot will come. You have to remember that. Okay. Any questions here? <laughs> so which one you want you want me to write? So any roller coaster. Roller coaster shall go. Yeah, start this roller coaster one. First, so roller coaster program. A BMI you write, okay? BMI program, you write it. This is the nested fields again. BMI you write. And again, so roller coaster, I'll write. So read this. So you have to print, welcome to roller coaster. So I'll just put the roller coaster program. So let's write this. So roller coaster, we have to give, so what, what do you need to give? Int A's, right? A's, we have to give A's, right? That's a very important here, right? The input is, okay, height. Height and A's, both we have to give, right? So this is the parameter, height to A's, your yeah. Boolean value. Boolean is one Two photos. Words. So you have to give one photos or not. So that also you have to tell that. So you have to three parameters you have to take. So one is, first one is, uh, height can be, so, Low. Or you, you can give anything, right? I'll consider in teaser, okay? Let's consider in teaser. As of now, okay? Int. Right? Int is. So what is the other one? Boolean. So is photo. So these are the three parameters. Okay. Now, so write system dot out dot print ln. Come to roller coaster. That's the first step. You read this everything here. It is available, and take the height parameter in centimeters to measure rider is it eligible to ride or not. So if height is 120 print, you can ride the roller coaster. Else print, sorry, you have to, so you have to grow taller before you can ride and take a one age parameter to pay the ticket bill. So that is another bill we are taking. So let's go and write all this. So if height is greater than 12, 
right? First if condition you write. So for which one I am writing if condition, you can see that very clearly here for this one. So this uh, diamond uh, shape is there, right? That you have to write the if condition, okay? The box one is the your print statement. If, <coughs> so height is greater than or equal to 128. So what you can say, you have to say, you can, so we have a message here. You can write the roller coaster. So else, what is the else part we need to write? So I'm writing these two. I'm writing these two. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. So what is this? This part. This part I am saying. Okay. So else part, it will come to no. So there I am writing. Please understand the program. So that flow diagram, if you understand, it's very easy. So now, okay. If, so the A's is greater than or equal to 120. See so that. Okay, you can write away, I told, then the continue there only, in the yeah. if condition only you continue. So is, now is is the factor. Now, if, if, age, age. so is greater than, less than 12. So we'll, we'll write first less than 12, okay? Less than 12. So what is that? If is is less than 12, so what is the total cost? Bill I total bill. I'll, I'll put a one variable here on the top. So int total bill. So I'll just declare it. I'll just declare it, but I'm not going to assign. I'm not going to assign. So now calculate the total bill. Total bill equal to, hmm. Five dollars. Total, total bill plus five dollar. Okay. Total bill plus five dollar. Or just a five dollar only, right? You can say number of persons is not included here, but you can say just simply five dollar. Okay. Just put a five dollar. Else. If. Else if. So next, what is that? Maybe you can put number of uh, people also. You can, if you want, you can add that one more parameter. So number of people you want to, that also you can add one more parameter, but uh, fine. So as of now, just continue like this, okay? 12 to 18. So is is greater than 12, greater than or equal to, right? Greater than or equal to 12. And, and less than is, is less than 18, 18 equal. So that's what I so they didn't say equal, but okay. 18 or over I am saying that means this is the greater than or equal to. Okay, this is the next block. So 12 to 18 means seven dollar. So total bill is seven. So I think I have to add here total bill. For example, if one person comes here and okay, so let's see first. Okay, that's the one. Else if else if h greater than or equal to a is greater than or equal to eighteen. Eighteen. Then total bill equal to what is the one? Twelve dollars. So that part is done. So this part is done. So then you want to take a photo. So this, this if condition inside. So you want to take a photo? Yes or no? Then add the no means total bill only you return. Okay. So total bill only you return. So if, so again, if he wants to take a photo, if want a photo, uh, so this, what is the parameter? 
photo wants. I can just put a want a photo, otherwise, right? We are going to give basically is photo want, yes or no, we can give, okay, true or false. Basically, true or false, you have to give. So here, see that. If any of these things, if photo wants, anyone, anyone photo wants, plus $3 will add, okay? Plus $3 will add. So that how to write this one. See this, if inside, you have to write. So, so you have to add this $3 for that. Okay, so for example, this, this person is saying, I don't want. So then you are not going to add, if wants. So uh, you can write a condition here, inside this. Inside this, you can write one more condition. Or otherwise you can put here. So that total. So this what this is a you know this is representing this one okay this total now here if he wants for example is less than 12 is expecting uh, a bill right so if he okay. wants a photo and put one more if condition if is photo want photo want <laughs> What I want, the total bill is going to be plus $3 will add. Okay. Else, we can return the normal. Uh, so the total bill is 5 only. Okay. So that's all. Same you can implement for other, other also. Here also, this, if any is, you know, is expecting, is photo wants. Else, so you can expect uh, the same bill you can return. So will equal to seven. But here you have to add plus three. So next to same you can add here also. So this is the how you can write it, the complex structure inside one so you block inside another. So multiple is photo because we need to add the photo for all the ages right different ages the price is going to wear the even though price is same otherwise simply you can say instead of writing multiple times you can write one simple thing okay if anyone wants a photo so anyone right so anyone wants a photo what you can do so instead of this bigger uh, code i can say you you are returning the value here right you are returning the value. So you're returning the value. Uh, so I can return the value here, right? The, so I can do one thing. Here I can put it in the same if condition. If is photo want is photo want then add total bill equal to total plus three. So equal to total bill plus three. Bill plus plus three, simple. So you can avoid the multiple uh, uh, code, right? Any mistake? Initialize a variable. So basically we didn't initialize here, right? So initialize before using that local variables, you have to initialize. Otherwise it won't accept. So this is the another simple thing. Else, so what is that? Uh, total will you return. If, so else, so else total will you can return. So you can return the total bill. So you can say simply you can print if you want. So you can write here total bill with a photo. So total bill with the photo.
Otherwise, you can write total bill without photo. Without photo. That's it. Okay. So this is the how you can, even you can make it a return type method, this one. Total bill you have to return, basically. You can write a return type method. So it's up to you how you want. So let's call this method and do that. So I'll give you 120 and he is I'll give 20 and uh, I'm giving false. Then how should you, how much you should get? A is 20 means where it will go? 12. 12. 12 yeah. So I have given a for no photo. False. No photo means it will come here, right? So his photo is false. False means where it will go? It will come here. Right? So you want me to run in uh, debug mode so that you'll get a better idea? We didn't use height and weight anywhere, right? Height or weight. No, uh, no weight required here. So they just given only height only. Ah, height. Okay. 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 They have given only height. Yeah. So no weight here. Weight is not required. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that's based on that. You can run it. So let's go and run this. So maybe you can add number of if you want. Let's see 12. So next time I can add uh, true. True, but uh, this one I'll change it to 10. So eight, so that eight means it is calculating less than uh, 12, right? That's why five plus three, three. so eight. So that means it, it, it printed. So total bill with the photo. So this one is, that means if condition it can. So that's how you can try it out all the things. So that's all, uh, any questions before going for the next program, last program, switch case. I've given so many examples, practice more, more practice only it will help you. Okay, so the next one is um, switch case. Let's write a switch case. A blick, so wide. I want to make a calculator. Okay, so let's do the calculator. So calculator program. So is it enough time? Okay, it's enough. I'm going to read the uh, operator. Operator also will read from uh, so what are the mathematical operations you can do? Uh, Addition, subtraction, subtraction, mm -hmm. multiplication. Right? So what are the symbols? So what are the symbols for the addition? What symbol you will use? What plus, operator? Plus. Mm -hmm. Plus, minus, minus. minus. Star. Right. So these, so these are the. So you you need to give these. Uh, no, uh, some two numbers, and you do the sum or uh, multiplication or division based on the given operator. So user is going to give an input to this method, which operator you want to perform between the given two values. So even the values also I'll give from the. Uh, keyboard, how to input the data to your method while running the program. 
please understand now we are giving through parameters right i'm giving through parameters while running the program how can you enter the data for the parameter value not parameter values but for your variable values how to supply the data during run time to your variable values variable name variable names how to supply the data during run time so to supply the data during run time you have to use a scanner class scanner class is available in java.util package so this class has a lot of methods you can insert you can enter the data integer type of data you can enter double data you can enter long data you can enter string data so all this kind of data you can enter so how to enter the data so to input the data input the data to a variables from keyboard during run time of the program so we can use scanner class so java.util dot scanner class methods so there are a lot of methods so next int so next int is a return type method next double so next int will return what type of what type of data double next float what it will return float next long what it will return long so we have a next method and uh, uh, next line method so these two will return string type data so what is the written type of these two methods string, string. so returns string type data so these are the methods these are all non static methods how can you call non static return type methods using object create an object to the yeah. class hmm. then so return type methods data type of the method data type variable hmm. first let's create another package class right so how can you call import First you need to, yeah, first you have to import scanner equal to new scanner. But this one is a parameterized constructor, is there for this? You have to pass to input the data. We have to use system dot in. System dot out will output the data, but system dot in will input, input the data. 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 So this already we discussed in the first class. System dot in as an argument you have to pass for the scanner constructor. So this is the parameterized constructor. So it is throwing error. Why it is throwing error? So it's import. import. So import because another package class, right? You are using in your package class. Other package classes you can use somewhere else. Means you have to import the parameters first. Okay, let's do that. What are the? So I'll declare two variables. So what type, what type of data you want to read? Give. So double a float a integer a. What what type of data you want me to declare here? Declare two variables. Float, float and double. Runtime data. So float, ah? Yeah, and double. F one, F two. So two variables I declared, and also one variable character variable. Operator, so I need to give operator also, right? Plus uh, minus uh, that that operators I have to give. So plus minus Stop. multiplication. So these so these operators I need, to, but these operators what type of data? Uh, string hmm? character right? character character. Character, right? A single, single one. Character. Single character. Character. Single character means what data type you need to use? Character. 
Correct. data type. Okay. So we are forgetting all of them, basics. So please enter F1 value. So we have to, no? So you, you need to call the method. So F1 equal to SC dot next float. You can see next byte is there. Where is next float? First. That's one. So please enter F1 value. MJ, why you need to write in the print statement? Because in the console, it will show you. Otherwise, you don't know. Cursor, we keep on waiting. So that's why we are giving. See how I am calling the variable names. I yes. declared here. Object. How I am calling them? Variable names, the local variable names. Uh, object. Object. Why object? Local variables. Huh? Variable names. Variable name. Variable name. Variable name, right? Just variable name I'm using. Now, uh, I yeah. need to pass this operator. So, sys out. Please enter operator. So, plus so minus so multiplication division operators. So, so this this you are going to enter. So, but that operator. So, but we don't have a direct method to get the character value. But we have only string, right? The string methods you have. So use string methods and the string methods. So you take the string first as a string, okay? Whatever you are giving as a plus or minus, whatever you are giving, take it, take it as a string. But from that string, you can get the character using caret method. So the first character I want. So this method returns the character. That's what I am storing here. So this method return type is a caret data type. Yeah. That caret data type variable is an operator. So now this one is a string. Uh, string dot, I'm calling the method. This method, see that. What is the return type of this method? Which class this method is there? String class. String class, this method is there. So this is entire sc dot next is a string. String dot the return type method, caret method. So caret method, what is the parameter you need to pass? Index number. The index number, if you pass on that index, what character is there? That will come and store here. Okay. So that's the main concept here. You got the F1 value, you got the F2 value, you got the operator. Now use the switch case. Okay. Use the switch case. So the switch case is, so first you have to declare the output also, right? You have to declare output. So double or float, whatever it is, I'll declare output float. Float output. Switch the operator. If operator is okay, so case plus. If it is a plus, output equal to F1, F1 plus F2. Bracket. Case minus. Output F1 plus minus minus, minus F2 break case so multiplication so output equal to F1 multiply by F2. So why I'm writing break if any condition is Satisfy. not true. So satisfies that will exit from there itself. So output equal to F1 divided by F2. Default block 
So then I'm, I'm going to say entered invalid operator. So you can print if that operator if you want. That's it. So now I'm going to print this output. So F1 plus operator plus F2. I'm just giving some spaces, okay? equal to output. Why it is throwing error? 116 line. Hmm? What is the reason? So what is the reason? Mouse over there first. Please read that. Local variable output may not have initialized. So what, what is the mistake we did? Yeah. Uh, we didn't initialize output. So we output. didn't initialize the output variable. We didn't assign the value. So local variables without assigning, you cannot use. That's the meaning of that. Okay. CSOBZ dot calculator. See that when when while executing this, the window will open and it will ask enter F1 value. Once you enter, then it will ask you enter F2 value. Then after it will ask you enter operator. So let's run this. See, these are all executed forever, but here, see, it is still running mode. So you have to enter, enter F1 value. Please enter F2 value. So enter operator. Are we good? Yeah. So see, now, now the execution is over. So this is the all the methods and programs, please go and practice and uh, you will get a better idea. So anybody, so didn't get under on this line? Nobody asked. I know nobody got that, but we accept, I think, Lavanya, some of the people who knows uh, strings. Lavanya, you are good or still you need more explanation there? Yeah, I'm good. Like, if you give since you gave only one operator, it is taking the first one, right? Right, because not one operator. So basically what, what happens here is, see, you have a string. You are getting a string S equal to Java, for example, you take it. If you want first character, okay? First character, so you want character C equal to. So the string variable is yes, right? Yes dot caret of if you write a zero you will get a j j so you will get the output what is the output j. you will get j j you will get yeah j is the output you will get mm. for example you want v two i start caret of two yes dot caret of two. Caret of two what is the j v value basically it will start here Zero. So start with a zero character. Zero. One, two. Index. One. Is the index. Then one, then two, two then three. Okay. So it, it always first character will be in the zero index. Yes. So now here, if you want V, so what is the two. index number you have to give for character two. method? Two. Two. So that's it. Then output you will get V. V. So this is the logic behind that. So the string, now c dot next is a string, string mm -hmm. dot, you are applying the caret method mm -hmm. and you are giving the index because you are giving a plus, right? Plus means first, first one only. So now plus is in the string, string dot caret of zero means, okay, the yes. first index plus, that plus is taking as a character and storing here. Are we good? 
are any doubts still hmm? problem is uh, you won't talk you won't ask very good persons right thank you guys bye